Jeff Greenfield is a serial clean tech entrepreneur. In 2000, he founded Third Sun Solar, an award-winning solar installation firm serving commercial, institutional, government, and residential clients. He founded New Resource Solutions, a fintech platform using technology to reduce transaction expenses for clean energy project investors, and he serves on the board of the Amicus Solar Cooperative, a member-owned procurement group of leading Northern, uh, North American solar installation companies. Noah Davis, uh, captain of Team Australia Snow Sculpture, by the way, uh, is the founder of Solar Rollers, energy education program which started down the road in Carbondale and is now going global. Uh, uh, Dame Cordova uh, is owner and CEO of Accelerated Business Schools with over 118,000 graduates since 1979 from over 85 countries. A humanitarian philanthropist and author, she is the global business developer for leading solar architect, Hong Ming. Please join me in welcoming them all for this next panel. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the introduction. And uh, boy, that's a tough act to follow. Uh, but I'm glad that everyone did get up and get invigorated. Uh, it's kind of hard to be a 445 slot um, or 430-ish four, slot. Uh, but we've got a great panel. It's uh, been great to get to know DC a little bit. I've known Noah for a while. And the panel title is The Unstoppable Solar, uh, The Unstoppable and Advancing Across the Globe. And somehow they picked a guy from Ohio, uh, a guy from Colorado, and luckily a woman from Chile uh, with a lot of Asian experience. Uh, we did have another guest from Africa, but Luca was unable to join us. Uh, so we're missing out on his perspective, but we'll, we'll do our best. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the subject matter here and try to make this more of a conversation than individual presentations. Uh, and then we're going to reserve uh, at least half of the time for Q&A and kind of mutual discussion. I think that there's a lot of value in uh, hearing questions from the audience uh, rather than us talking at you. Uh, so be ready uh, with uh, your questions uh, that come out of the, the discussion. Um, so uh, as, as the intro said, um, I've been doing solar for 20 years, which in solar years is almost like 100. Um, and Third Sun Solar was uh, started as an installation company. We're based in uh, Ohio. We're in the poorest county in Ohio. We're in Appalachian County. And I have uh, the children, nephews, and grandchildren of coal miners uh, on my team installing solar or designing solar, uh, in one case, selling solar. And that's really cool. I, I, I don't take our Appalachian coal mining history for granted. And if you think about the developing world, uh, the core periphery relationship between the haves and the have-nots, or the exploiters and the exploited, uh, Appalachian, Ohio was on the, the, the have-not and the exploited side. And uh, the solar transformation is really exciting, what, what we're doing there, uh, along with a colleague, uh, Dan Conant, with a solar holler in West Virginia. Again, moving you know, from theoretical to actual coal miners and coal field workers getting into clean tech uh, and, and having good employment for them and their families. Um, one of the things that uh, is a challenge is finding uh, qualified, trained uh, technologists. And so it's really cool what Noah is doing. He's going to talk a little bit about solar rollers and the STEM, science, technology, education, uh, and math. Um, uh, technology or uh, subject matter. And then uh, DC will, will share her story, uh, but one of the cool things about her is she is an ambassador. That's how she self-identifies. And she reps lots of things, lots of ideas, uh, but um, Juan Min and, and uh, the huge amazing things that, that are going on in China um, are inspirational. Um, so she's gonna be playing some slides uh, while she talks about that. Um, so before we tee it off, I, one of the quotes that I use often, uh, I've watched it happen, is that solar has moved from impossible to improbable, and I think every time I come to our day, I get more and more charged up about this, to inevitable. We have an inevitable clean tech future, and so really the question is how quickly will we go there and how will we get there? Um, so that's one of the reasons I love our day. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Noah um, to talk a little bit about solar rollers and, and what's this contraption you've got there. Uh, this is a, an example of a solar roller. So um, I want to take the chance. Uh, this is the first time I've been on stage at our day. 
and I've been coming here since 2009. So I really wanted to thank um, Chip and everybody on the R Day team. This is really an exceptional place. And I can remember sitting out there with a notebook, writing down ideas, and this is one of them. So um, well done to everyone who makes this such a community and, and uh, creates things like Solar Wait a minute, Roars. I gotta interrupt. Yeah. Did I just understand that the idea for Solar Roars was inspired when you were attending an R Day years ago? Yeah, you know, I, I just used to, I worked for Solar Energy International back at that time. And um, I, would, I would come here quietly in kind of an intern role at SEI and just jot down what everybody was doing. And I was amazed that some of the things that people were trying and some of the things that were working. And so uh, I have a whole notebook full of ideas, but this is one of them. Uh, I'm amazed and, at what yeah. you guys have accomplished. Talk, make sure. Yeah. So um, this is an a, um, energy education program for high schools specifically. So we. Um, work with high schools to design, build, test, and then race a solar-powered radio-controlled car. So this is the top of the car. This is the production side. It's about 45 watts on this car, but they have design freedom, so they do different things. And then this is the storage, which uh, some of the competitions we do with these cars are using um, storage, and some are not. They're just PV direct. But as you know, adding storage does a lot. Okay. And, um, and the rest of it is a little EV. So they get to design from scratch and then build and then test and then break and then fix and then test some more. And eventually we have a big race between all the different schools in the area. So um, we started off in Carbondale and we had schools from like Aspen High School down to Glenwood testing whether we could make these things work. They work incredibly well. They go really, really fast. And 16-year-old um, drivers love them, <laughs> like racing them and smashing them into each other. And so now we've spread, and we're, uh, we're racing at Earth Day, Texas. Uh, we're starting to race Maker Faire in Silicon Valley, um, Formula E in New York City. And we ran Dubai last year for the first time, which is how I ended up on this international panel. But uh, you know, a little local idea, it is spreading globally. and. My whole message for this panel and everyone is that young people want a part of this. You know, they, uh, they're extremely keen on, on doing this stuff. And um, it, it means a lot to them to be a part of it, too. And um, if you didn't notice, I do get kind of nervous when I speak. So okay. I have a technique to deal with this. And if you all could just strip down to your underwear, <laughs> I'll be fine. Thanks. <laughs> I read about that. I, we, uh, I'm glad you have your underwear on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to that. So, I mean, again, to put perspective, this started as an idea at our day, started here in the valley, got traction, and now yeah. it's in an oil emirate as well as. Yeah, it's in Dubai, which is pretty funny. And you yeah. started in Australia. Yeah, the whole. Yes. You're my, international. You can come back to me. I'll talk about us. <laughs> DC, jump into the high level okay. of, uh, of why you're up on this panel, what you're bringing to the party. Well, first, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I bring you gifts. I'm the good news bearer from China. And I had been in education for 30 years at the time, now 40 years, entrepreneurial education in churning out social entrepreneurs. <clears throat> and I met Wang Ming and went to the Solar Valley 10 years ago. And I could not believe the place. I could not believe this man. He is, he has been acknowledged. He has won the Alternative Nobel Prize. He was the first man to pass the first green law in China. Oh, it's OK. Uh, uh, I'm just going to get it going. OK. You've got 150 pictures to no, look no, at. No, no, I, I, I just, OK. And uh, so and I had the opportunity to be able to really get to know him and see what he was about. And I said, we have to show this to the world. And so I started looking for the right person, and I couldn't find the right organization. And then about five years ago, I met beautiful, beautiful Sally at an event in, um, in Colorado. I think we were somewhere, and I knew she was the one. And uh, I went looking for her, and I said, I want you to know that we have the most beautiful men in the universe that has created a solar valley, a city, a city that has seven million people that use uh, solar 
uh, to heat the water, and then all the street lights are definitely um, um, solar by power. And she invited him immediately. He's what I call a billionaire with heart. He was part of the government for 10 years in order for him to pass the first green law. And what you're seeing right now, what you, is all the different things that he has developed. But the biggest thing is that that one, that particular one, um, those, uh, can you go back a little bit? Uh, those are literally solar uh, toilets. You, you name it, and I think I'll take over a little bit here. Uh, you name it and you will find, um, let me just go back for a second here. Um, the, the, he has not only, this particular building is real, and this is where he lives, and so not only is he, you know, having a sample of seven million people, but also where you can build amazing buildings. Oops, did I turn it off? Okay, there we go. And so now, as you can see, these are PV, he has both thermal and PV, and what the good news that I bring to you is that he has had a lot of learning experiences. When you talk to him, he said that he would build this completely differently and that he would do things differently. This is one of the things that I asked him to do was a solar water filter and heater and desalinator. And, um, and this is what you can see. You can see a solar cooker when you go to the uh, exhibition area there on this weekend. And uh, he has just about everything solar and he wants to share with you all of the learning experiences that he has had through the years. So I bring to you good news because here's a man that for 20 years, he has been working on this, dealing with government. He hates government. He's not a communist, by the way. I think he's truly a capitalist. And he really, this, he, he goes to schools and completely sets up solar panels. He has factories. He has over 110 um, projects um, outside of China, and he sends all his love, all his aloha to all of you. The reason he can't be here is because he nagged and nagged the Chinese government for so long. He literally yells at them whenever he hears anybody going to outside of China and creates any kind of anything but renewable outside, especially in places like Africa. He is the most global, the most loving human being on the planet that loves the whole world, but he's not here because he needs to really take care of China, who, by the way, the reason why they are so advanced and are spending so much money in what, you know, in all the solar and all the renewable endeavors is because they're dying. You know, it's, it's a very serious thing happening. We not only can learn from them the technology, but we can also learn from them all the learning experiences that they have had. So please visit the Solo Valley. I don't know when Wang Ming will be able to come back and return and be with all of us here because he's so busy saving China and his people. Not that he just feels Chinese, he's very international. But one of the things I want you to know is that we are students of Buckminster Fuller, and this is something that if anybody would like a copy of this, please let me know. You can find me anywhere around here. And so we are creating what our day is all about and that I adore Sally and Chip is because they're creating a whole new model. There's no other place like this. And the message that we bring to you and what I do in my entrepreneurial educational business is to get entrepreneurs and when I ask all of you, how do we make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time? through spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or the disadvantage of anyone. So creating products for children, services, working in the places that you do, answers that question and it's the best way to not only add value to humanity but also for you to get wealthy if that is one of the things you desired. And that's what I bring. Thank you so much, DC. And what an inspiring story, right? I got to, uh, to meet uh, Wang Ming uh, at our day, and he's a humble guy. He's an intelligent guy, but he definitely has a huge heart. And so what this does for me is, is it shows the vision. It shows the traction. It shows what can happen, uh, what will happen inevitably uh, in the poorest county in Ohio or in Florida or in Massachusetts, or it's already happening in a big way in, in some of the other states like California. Um, but uh, you know, these kinds of examples 
uh, give us not only references so we can tell the politicians it's not Harry Potter, it's, it's viable and real, um, but also hope and encouragement. Um, no, I, I want you to, to circle back a little bit. Uh, you, you've been doing solar rollers for long enough that some of the students, the, some, uh, the boys and girls that have gone through it, are you tracking them? Are you uh, uh, we do watching? Watch, are, they, are they solar experts now? Many are, and many are pursuing a, a career, and, um, and you know, it, the teams are self-selecting at this point, so we have a kind of a particular profile that seems to end up on the solar rollers team, and they usually have never been on a team before. They're kind of disengaged, very intelligent, and a lot of times they'll just lock in on this technology and, and the potential for it, and then, um, you know, after they do this, two, three, four years while they're in high school. Uh, we've had them go on to CMC engineering school and um, to School of Mines and to Stanford. And it's a very common thing to be written in the entrance exams for the okay. For, okay. For college. And can you talk a little bit about uh, boys and girls? We're, we're up here on the panel, and here we are, two to one ratio. Um, there's a big understanding about women in technology and girls in technology. Um, are you seeing, are you seeing uh, solar be more attractive or more cool or the barriers? Yeah, yes, I mean, we're seeing, what we see now, we're self-selecting, so the, the kids are signing up for this voluntarily. And, um, and originally we had very high interest from boys and not many girls, and then with a little bit of encourage, encouragement, what happened was all girls teams started signing up, so now we have um, there are a lot of people who want to fund their teams individually, and they get a lot of support from each other, and so we have quite a few all-girls teams. A good global example is in Dubai. We had, um, a, we had a, an entire team in burqas that I have, I've, I should have brought some photos, but we have pictures of a room like this with hundreds of kids working on these cars, and, and some of the teams were entirely in burkas and couldn't use the online course because they didn't have access to the internet. Wow. And, um, and it's been an amazing experience, but we're seeing more and more support for all girls teams, and that seems to be the format that they mm -hmm. I've that seen they coding enjoy. camps yeah. for, for all, all girls. Yes. Um, so one of the things we're really keenly aware of in the renewable energy uh, world, that the, where the rubber hits the road, is how male dominated the field is. We have a lot of female uh, participation at the admin level, financial level, uh, sales level, but not so much up on the roof. And I want to call out uh, uh, two things. Um, who's heard of a B Corp or a Benefit Corp? Great. So triple bottom line, Patagonia, uh, we, Third Sun Solar, and Amicus, and NRS, we've all elected to be a Benefit Corp. And that means we have a third party outside evaluation of our claims of of people, planet, and profit. On the people side, we're, we're not going to be a, a, a jerk, a, you know, archaic, sexist organization, and it's really hard to walk that talk. And so I've got uh, encouragement from uh, the Lego robotics as well as the solar rollers that we have more and more women coming into this tech field because we need to achieve all the things, we, the lofty goals we've been talking about. Uh, we're not going to do it with 49% of the population. Uh, May I say? For sure. One of, um, in my company, we have people from nearly 85 countries, and mostly we are not only in China, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia. I'll bore you with all the countries we're in, Indonesia, India, all around there. And the women, we churn out social entrepreneurs. What is so interesting that in that part of the world, if we're talking about global now awareness, is that the difference between, and being Chilean but grew up in Los Angeles from the time I was 12, I'm a very Americanized Chilean, but one of the big differences is that they really do apply whatever they learn, like you did, and you are doing, and of course I'm doing, and they really put it to work immediately, and that's what I really want to encourage all of you, especially, of course, the women, that we learn here, and there are so many mentors and masters here that we can learn from, and use, use me. I have an amazing network of entrepreneurs around the world that I can just open up many doors for you, but you have to be ready business-wise and, and you know, ready to receive like the two gentlemen that were here earlier, 
You have to be ready with your business plan, and this is where you know, I really teach business in that respect. Entrepreneurial, and more than anything else, he was correct, the other gentleman, learning marketing and sales. Like, I wanted you to give your website so that people can see your background and what you're really doing. And so it's important for us to remember that women, we were just not told a long time ago that we couldn't do business. Of course, my family was very different. I was told I had to do business. <laughs> but one of the things that I want you to know that the barrier has already been broken by many beautiful women. And technology does not know whether you're a man or woman, how old you are, where you're from. Technology will do whatever it is that needs to be done, and that will save the world. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, get some questions ready. And uh, the rule here is um, it's got to be a question, not shameless self-promotion. And it also has to be into a microphone. They're, they're live streaming this and videoing this. So if you do have a question, raise a hand. And uh, one of our microphone uh, porters will help you out. Um, we're we're so good that we've uh, addressed all the questions before they've been asked. <laughs> while, while someone scratches their head a little bit, I'm going to point out uh, today's Juneteenth, and that made me think a little bit about our heritage here in North America. Uh, not only you know our treatment of women and, and all the issues there, but also uh, African Americans and people of color. Um, Africa has been underrepresented here. I know there's an attempt to try to do that. There's some people with some experience in Namibia and some other folks. I was in the Peace Corps in Congo, in Zaire. Uh, and doing water projects, and that's actually where I did my first solar project. Uh, it was donated by the German government, and it was in a box in the corner of a room in the corner of a storage room uh, because the uh, instructions were in German, and it was a Francophone country. And they just sent, it was just kind of like that drop-in parachute development. And I was already into solar back then, and so I worked with some local guys, and we figured it out. We had to go find some wire, and but we put this together, and that was my first solar electric system. And now, uh, I heard it mentioned earlier, Africa and many parts of yes. India and, and the developing world are leapfrogging. What's happened with wireless versus hardline telephones is happening with energy infrastructure. And it's all happening faster than anyone's predicting. Uh, so, so the continent of Africa electrifying mm -hmm as well as uh, more rural parts of India and Asia, give me huge hope that they're not going to be on this wasteful path. Um, so questions? Anybody? Can I just make a comment on that as well? Yeah, this is a conversation. So, you There's know, no I question. find it very interesting that um, you know, your first experience with the solar system is instructions in German, big problems, how does this work, not enough wire, and, and um, finding your own solutions. And, that is so crucial for uh, all the young people coming into these fields that we don't just feed them what we think is the answer and then let them um, t you know, tell them to implement our answer. We want to give them a box without all the instructions or make sure it's in the wrong language because they, they're incredibly creative people and they, um, and they find their way through the problem and that's what makes them want to attack the next problem. And so, you know, in terms of your experience is really common. You talk to early solar people and they couldn't get the, you know, they couldn't charge the battery for their VW from the solar panel and they made friends and... Solving problems. We need to keep giving them problems for hey, sure. Hey, Sandra, so, real hey quick, got a question. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Um, totally agree on culturally appropriate technology and um, I, I could, speak volumes on this topic based on my work in solar in Haiti. But I'm curious from your perspectives, you're doing all these amazing things on a, on a community based by community level. Um, what do you see as the biggest barriers to scaling these solutions? Barriers to scaling? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Who wants to take that one? So I didn't understand the question. So, so if, um, if in order to see things like these, um, these solar communities all over the world, okay. you know, the founder is currently in China. What do you think, is it funding that's the biggest barrier? Is it people hearing about it and wanting to adopt sure. it? What do, you, what do you see as the biggest barriers to, to having these solutions universally applicable and available? May I just say real quickly, uh, this reminds me, I'm answering the question. This reminds me like in, he was talking about Puerto Rico, you know, the group before. You know, one of the things, it, it has to do with culture. 
In South America, we grew up turning off all the lights. My sweetie will tell you, I still turn off all the lights if I'm not in a room, because we grew up with this whole thing that has to do with not having enough electricity. I grew up in Chile in the 50s. And so one of the things, the same thing, Wang Ming, he started small. He was actually in the oil industry and literally was a miracle. The story is little, I can't tell you the whole story is amazing. We really should do a book on it. But a politician saw a sign that he had, called him up, and it was his passion. It was his energy. And he was like, it, he, he was just so committed, he got Goldman Sachs to give him 100 million US to build the first part, and then he put billions into building this amazing solar valley and a solar city. But a lot of it has to do with just all the things that are being recommended here. I, we couldn't possibly answer in the five days and in the expo, the answers are being given, all the different little things that can be done. That it starts very small. There was a woman in the bathroom that said to me, oh, my, oh outside, she says, I, I have a really small business. And then we all start small, like I started very small too, and I have a huge company now. But what you have to do is just get a team like this. We get a network of people like this, and we work it. We work the network. We, we first ask, what can I do for you? You bring in the gifts, and then you will get the gifts. It starts with people. Sandra, the only thing I would add to that, um, uh, some advice I got before was don't try to do it all yourself. And a lot of times entrepreneurs, we're, we're leaders, we're alpha folks, uh, we're, we're aggressive, and we also kind of think we're gonna you know, solve all the problems with, on our own shoulders. And I've only got two. And so uh, baby steps, I, I, my first hire was a guy who was smarter than me on technology. And then my second hire was a person who was a lot smarter than me on accounting and billing and bookkeeping. And that was just like, oh my gosh, this is the way to go. Hire people that are smarter than me and empower them, get out of their way, encourage them, make sure that we're all in alignment. So working through others is the only way we're gonna solve these problems. And um, I'm gonna work for somebody else right now. I'm gonna shamelessly plug Noah, uh, solarrollers.org. Indeed. Solarrollers.org, real easy. The dog, dot org means that it's a nonprofit, and it's a very lean, underfunded nonprofit. If anybody wants to make a really big difference and, and impact the, you know, the world in so many different yeah. ways, there's lots of ways to do that, but check out solarrollers.org, talk to Noah. There's some neat stuff that they're doing, and it's getting solar in the, in the hearts and minds of people across the world. Uh, I come up against people all the time that say, solar is great, it's a future technology. When is it gonna <laughs> be ready? And, and that's part of the disinformation campaign that we've got going on. Uh, it's the reality of, of an EV zipping around with better acceleration ratios than, than a gas-powered one, and, and these kids that are gonna be able to say, no, actually solar works, no, actually EVs works, no, actually storage works. Uh, that's gonna be part of the solution. Um, other we, questions? We, we've oh. never been beaten by a coal-powered version either. <laughs> Yay. And I was, never once. I was going to say, please go look at the solo cookers. Those actually cook, and uh, we are working with foundations to get them to really take them to places, especially places like Puerto Rico and other, the many areas around the world, and just go pick up the stuff that we have on our table for you to learn. We're here to give. We're here to just educate. We have... We're very successful in other areas, but when we come to our day, we just like to come and just give you good news and offer you information and knowledge, connect with you know, great teachers like, I know Randy, you're gonna be speaking on Thursday afternoon, and I wanna give a big plug to my mentor and one of the greatest teachers on Thursday afternoon, Randy McNamara, and just keep learning and soaking it up and support each other. I want to give a delayed answer to Sandra's question over there too, which, you know, the thing that I think is in short supply is just optimism, and um, we definitely need funding, but what we really need is champions and people who um, are finding a way to move forward, and, um, and definitely if you have some optimism, come and talk to us, because we, we've got lots of work to do. It's hard in the front lines and in the trenches, yeah. so that's the other thing is self-care and uh, keeping, keeping each other healthy and, and happy. Let's we finally have a question, and then after that, we're going to wrap it up. Go ahead with the microphone, because that's what We have 50 seconds. 
Um, so I was talking to you earlier, and you were saying that you weren't hearing the voices of people like myself that are engaging and having the conversation excited about it. And so what's the best way for us to reach you and for the message to be heard and communicated and how you guys have been able to connect with mentors and keeping that cycle going? Uh, action. Uh, mm -hmm. So if someone your age, I'm making some assumptions, probably doesn't own her home yet, but you can influence your parents. You might influence your landlord. Uh, so going solar, the more people see solar in use, the better. Uh, vote with your pocketbook. Vote with your dollars. Buy, support sustainable products. Get rid of plastics. Go to restaurants that use metal straws instead of disposable plastic ones. Um, lots of things. That's my opinion. You guys have a vote. answer for her? Vote, vote, vote. There's yeah. that showing up for the polls. Action, including all the above and some more. Thank you. We're Super. right on time. Thank, Thank you. you.